The Great Debate Series. Best cornerback ever. We've already done wide receiver. I have Jerry Rice. Perloff has Randy Moss. Now we go to cornerback. Perloff, you get the floor first. Okay, I'm going to go uh, sort of against the grain here. I'm going with a man named Rod Woodson. So I looked at a lot of guys here. Obviously, uh, Dion, obviously, Darrell Revis, obviously, Charles Woodson. I could go down the list. There are a lot of great ones. But then I sort of looked into the numbers here. Rod Woodson, third all time interceptions, 71 interceptions. Now, remember, they used to, every quarterback threw 45 interceptions a year back in the day. So Dick Knight Train Lane and all those guys yep. are going to be all time. The modern era, there's no one even close to Rod Woodson. He's first all time in interception return yards. He's first all time in interceptions returned for a touchdown. He has 20 forced fumbles, 32 fumble recoveries, first all time among all defensive players. Has tons of tackles, 11 time Pro Bowler. 13 and a half sacks, defensive player of the year award. He's got it all. I kind of know where you're going. And for me, what makes Rod Woodson different is that he was a complete player. He wasn't just a great cover corner. He was a dominant player all over the field. So he edges a really, really close field for me as the greatest corner the NFL has had. Okay, I see you that and raise you somebody who was so talented, they didn't even play their sport full time and still is known as the greatest at their position. And it's Deion Sanders as the greatest quarterback ever. The six-time All-Pro, Defensive Player of the Year, 94. He's number two in non-offensive career touchdowns scored. That's higher than Rod Woodson. The number one. Well, is... yeah, but that was a lot of returns. Okay, that was. But talk about versatility. You want to talk about Woodson? I want to talk terms... about defense, not special teams. Okay, but I think that that all matters, right? Because Dion's Ooh, specifically a... no. Oh, I think it has to play. Punt returns. I think the fact that. In terms of athleticism and yeah, being yeah. able to do that, for sure. No, because you, you Woodson, can't be the greatest cornerback and say he was also an amazing punt returner. I think you're looking at great cornerback, and we know that Dion. I mean, Dion was the best, and it's just a feather in his cap that he also was, you know, contributing to the team sometimes on the offensive side of the ball, on yes. special teams. Yes, I know that's that can't count. Okay, I I like what you're going. I do understand your argument, but you got to separate that out. But go ahead. Okay. And by the way, Dion doesn't need all that. He's still amazing. I agree <laughs> with that. I mean, but Woodson also was punt return and kick return too. Yeah. Yeah. No, Rob Woodson was an awesome returner, but I didn't count that in any of the stats I gave you. <laughs> I also think. <laughs> I, oh, well, actually, I don't did. Worry, I don't totally, worry about it because I did. I did. I did. Dion has more punt returns and kick returns for touchdowns than Rod Woodson. But yeah, I mean, Devin Hester. Does this mean Devin Hester is the best cornerback because he played cornerback in, in Miami? And <laughs> <laughs> Devin and he's Hester a great is returner. Devin Hester is number one actually on the list of non-offensive career touchdowns. Yeah, scored. he's, he's am one. amazing. And, and he had twenty, and Dion had nineteen. So it's not and, like and it Devin was, Hester didn't even play defense. <laughs> and it's not like you know that was run, he ran away with it. Dion also not to say that Rod Woodson didn't have this, but there were. He, there was no way that Dion was ever going to be able to have the all-time interceptions, uh, you know, in his favor because no quarterback would be that stupid to keep throwing to that side of the ball where Dion Sanders is. Yes, and so he, I, the fact that he was even playing baseball and was not even like a full-time football player is just the most ridiculous part about this. Imagine any other person in football being able to say. I was actually doing something else. And something that Dion has said is harder. He says football, excuse me, baseball is harder than football and is still the all-time greatest at his position. I think you're bringing in a lot of cool Dion things. Are you going to mention that he has he's had a great start at Colorado in the transfer portal? <laughs> I'm say, Let's no, he focus scored a on touchdown quarterback. in one game and First then hit Dion, a home run in another in the same day. Dion is the best cover quarterback that ever played football. He doesn't need all that stuff. Okay, but, but I he like just to bring the any, tangibles. But he didn't do anything else on the field. That's the thing. He, he, he was not going to tackle like, anybody. He, yeah, you, know, you no were more sacks. likely to tackle somebody. He never ever blitz. Rod Woodson could do it all. Woodson has a few, has a lot of sacks too. I was yeah, I, I have thirteen and a half. Yeah, like uh, for a corner. But he was actually considered a great blitzing corner. Now, so that's the only reason I, I got to. If I had to shut down one receiver, I could. Eat, if you said Dion, I'd be like, great. Rod Woods, but Rod Woodson did so many other things that I I'm going to push him up a little more. Also, I actually consider all that Dion stuff as a negative. 
It's funny, all the baseball. I How? thought I thought that Dion was not as dedicated to football and wasn't as available as some of the other cornerbacks on this list. Now, he did play a ton of games. It's not like he totally shirked football, but I thought, you know what, a Dion. The fact that he also was, you know, had so many other interests and played baseball and was sort of like a one-man branding machine, I thought that almost took away. If he just focused on playing cornerback, he would have been even more amazing. He already is great, and I think it adds to his mystique the fact that he was the best at his position and still could do these other things. And by the way, we talked about wide receivers, and you said Randy Moss, who took plays off, and you never said that hurt his argument that he wasn't all in all the time. Well, I got to tell you, can I tell you one side? The two greatest, well, Devin has to do, but have you ever seen Randy Moss or Dion return a punt? It is like, Randy barely ever did it, but it's the two most electric things you'll ever see in your life. <laughs> because those guys, if we were talking about who's the most exciting, oh my God, Dion by 50 miles, but best cornerback, cornerback. Dion. Rod Woods. <laughs> Let's go to the phones. 855 212 cbs Peter's in Portland, Oregon's got uh, someone he'd like us to consider. Hello, Peter. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. I wanted to say the other was that Charles Woodson yep. should be on the list. Yep. Um, poor guy got cheated out of the tuck rule. That would have changed the Raiders' career. And he was good in Green Bay. He was, Peter. Charles Woodson on so many of these lists. Obviously, he's a Hall of Famer as well. Only a three-time All-Pro. I'm not say only. I mean, it's incredible. But not up there with Dion as a six-time All-Pro. And how many All-Pros did Woodson have? Rod, that is. Uh, I think eight. I mean, listen, Woodson, Charles Woodson was amazing, too. Sorry, I'm, uh, sorry, six for Rod Woodson. Defensive player of the year. Let's not forget that. Charles Woodson was awesome. He was so good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so, and by the way, can we just say Revis and Champ Bailey were also great, and, and the old-time guys seemed great. I, I I didn't see a lot of Night Train Lane, but it's a great nickname. <laughs> 855-212-4CBS. Frank is calling in uh, on 96.7 FM in Pennsylvania. Hello, Frank. Hi, how you guys doing? Doing great. I said uh, Perloff got the right team, but the wrong quarterback. I mean, Mel Blunt, and uh, mm-hmm. I grew up in the 70s watching the Steelers. I mean, they made a rule. I mean, he... When you were allowed to chuck, and then when you weren't, he still won, you know, led the league in interceptions, and he was just a monster. I mean, hitting people. I mean, he could have played linebacker in today's NFL. Yeah, yeah. highlights of Mel Blunt are terrifying. So he was a cornerback who just lay weighed people, right? Oh, yeah. And just, like I said, he led the NFL in interceptions, I think, the year after they made the Mel Blunt role in 78 or something there, or led the team. You know, I mean, he was, I don't know. I love Rod Woodson, too. Like I said, I'm a Steeler fan, obviously. Like I said, yes, I'd, I'd take both of them over Dion because Dion couldn't tackle uh, my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Frank and not <laughs> thank you for the phone call. Yeah, we're in our chat, youtube.com slash CBS Sports Radio. A lot of uh, votes there also for Mel Blunt. Listen, we're going to actually talk to a Steelers mm-hmm. corner Coming up next, Brian McFadden is going to join us to weigh and um, add a little credibility to this uh, debate. Mel Blunt, by the way, was 6'3 and had to be 220. He was, he was, built, I think he'd be a safety now, but I don't quite understand how that worked. Yeah. I mean, the Mel, Bl- according to Craig, it was 1978 when the Mel Bl- Blunt rule. I wasn't mm, sure the okay. rule, uh, but the, according to Craig in the chat, 1978, and it prevented, prevented, prohibited, excuse me, the defensive backs contact with a receiver. Uh, you could just lay people out yeah. <laughs> before that. It was like the real Wild West. Uh, let's, real football. Let's go to Will, who's in Myrtle Beach. He's got a good one for us. Hey, Will, how are you? Hey, I'm doing great. Um, I'm going to say Daryl Green. Yeah, so there good. There wasn't a player on the field. He wouldn't chase down. He was undersized, and nobody threw his way. And when they did throw, it was minimal catches. He was so good. And – for 20 years. I know. And one time all pro, though, not that we have to only go by the statistics here, but I was really surprised by this. Uh, never won defensive player of the year? I I wonder, you know, if that kind of cornerback was valued the same way. Obviously, we did pretty modern guys. Thank you, Will. Cornerback is way more valuable now than it used to be. Now you see cornerbacks. Well, because it's such a passing game. Yeah, it's such a passing game. You see them go in the top five of the draft. I'd have to look at the stats, but I don't think it was that way 30 years ago when it was more of a run game. Uh, also came in second in defensive rookie of the year voting. What year? Let me see if I can guess who's ahead of him. Uh, 1983. Ni- oh, 1980. Well, is that 
Is LT a rookie there? No, no, no. He was before that. Wait, hold on. They're giving me uh stand by one second. No, it wouldn't have been that. It would have been LT. Hold on one sec. AT, LT was 81, right? So rookie of the year, defensive rookie of the year, 83. Daryl Green, second in voting. So it was uh, uh, Mike uh, Cousineau. No, I have no idea. Who. <laughs> Vernon Maxwell, the Baltimore Colts, outside linebacker. Oh, my God. And later, a great shooting guard for the Houston Rockets. <laughs> <laughs> what about Austin? My joke. <laughs> Wait, sorry. I got, I, got, uh, I got sidetracked for a second. We're yeah. talking about greatest corner ever and wide receiver ever. So that's what our great debate series is. I have Deion Sanders as corner. Perloff has uh, Rod Woodson. For wide receiver, I have Randy. I have, excuse me. I have Jerry Rice. Perloff has uh Randy Moss. I got sidetracked though. The 1983 Offensive Rookie of the Year voting. Eric Dickerson narrowly beating out Dan Marino. Oh wow! <laughs> How about that? Ooh. And third was someone named Kurt Warner. C U R T Warner. Seahawks. Yeah. Awesome. Seahawks running back. 